There are so many scenes in here and I just want them to combine. Yeah, that's how I feel. It was so important to her at the beginning of the book, slips away. Loved the premise, Twilight for adults. Excuse you, book. Ugh. Good morning, it is 9.18. I just woke up and today I'm gonna finish this book. I've also barely started this book, but I'm gonna finish this book. As you can see by this other edition of the cover I have, A Discovery of Witches was actually turned into a TV series. Let's see, I had the large print version before and I think I made it to all of like page 18 in that. So we're gonna see where I'm at in this one. I haven't gotten to anything about demons and vampires yet. Okay, I did not get to chapter two. Wow, I think I only made it to page 10. <laughs> and in this copy of the book, there are 579 pages. So you know, this is gonna be fun. Now, before I get too far along, for those of you that don't know, A Discovery of Witches is the other tube chat book club of the two months, January and February. So I'm gonna be discussing this in depth with my good friend, Jessica Williamson. And it's gonna be really fun because she messaged me a little bit about her thoughts as she went along. And I think I'm just gonna reread those first 10 pages. And there, I really can't judge off of 10 pages, but it felt kind of, Initially info dumpy, we'll say. I think that's why I didn't continue on as quickly as I usually do when I'm sucked in by a book. So I guess that's what I'm saying. It didn't suck me in by the first 10 pages, but the actual backstory, the info it was dumping was interesting. So this could turn around for me. And I should say, not that you can always trust Goodreads, but it does have a four star average off of 336,570 ratings. So that's pretty impressive if the fact that a TV show was made of it didn't give you a clue about how popular it was. But all right, we are gonna freaking get to reading and I am going to finish this book today or within 24 hours. I'm staying up if I can't do it. It's happening. <laughs> but also a cappuccino would help it to happen. So let's go do that. See, so this book is perfect because we got novel and fuel, but we also have potions and elixirs and distilled extracty things. And that's the only part of this book I've actually made it through is that we're focusing more on like alchemy. So anyways, okay. Yeah. The very first page before chapter one goes, it begins with absence and desire. It begins with blood and fear. It begins with a discovery of witches. So <laughs> I just finished chapter three. I only am now starting chapter four, which is like page 30. And it is just now noon. So I've gone through 30 pages in like two hours, which is ridiculous. To be fair, I was talking with my parents for like, I don't even know how long we were out there talking, you know, about growing old and the kind of changes in the decades and changes in like expectations about aging. I don't know. It was a very interesting conversation. And that's one of the great things about living with my parents is how many great conversations we get to have all the time, except when I'm trying to freaking read. Usually I have to sequester myself places if I want to read or write or work or do anything. And that's, um, it's happening. This is it. I'm sequestering <laughs> with coffee. Yay. I will say that I found that first chapter to still be info dumpy about the history of our main character and like her family's background kind of thing. But it's so intriguing and all of the kind of info dumps we've gotten in other places too has has been interesting at least. And I actually like their writing style. I think there's been this trend toward longer books and a lot of like different YA and adult stuff. And I think it's because they're infusing things with a lot more description than I tend to like. So I actually like their writing style here minus the one or two things where I'm like, Okay, it didn't need to be said, I got it, but I feel like it's kind of picking up. We've been introduced to our like, I guess, second main character and or obviously gonna be the love interest. Let me see if I can find it. It was only his desire to find Ashmole 72 that made him linger with the enigmatic Diana Bishop. Was it though? Was it? I don't believe you. We're gonna see if I can get through this faster now that I have, that I'm by myself. <laughs> I have a new favorite character. His name is Chris. He's a minor character and he's one of the first instances I've noticed with her kind of switching up the dialogue just a little bit. I'm at this chunk of the story, 
page 58, where we're introduced to a demon. I quite like some of the jokes that have been made about, you know, one day was a witch day, one day was a vampire day, and now they're on demon day. But then it's like, because there's such rich history, I think it's now coming through the dialogue of the demon. And at least it makes sense. Like I've seen things shoehorned in worse, and I'm not saying I could at all do it better, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, aha, yes, this paragraph of dialogue is going to be the explanation for the reader. <laughs> Back to reading all of this. Some promises matter more than others. I just like that. There's nothing magical about it, Matthew. It's a game I've played since I was a child. It made my I was always coming home. Before. Okay, so she closes her eyes a lot, right? No, this is not. There absolutely is something magical about it. And you could not tell me otherwise, book. <laughs> I know I sound a little bit nitpicky in all of these updates, but that's just because for me right now, I only have a couple things to nitpick and overall I really like it. Like I'm loving the back and forth dialogue. Dialogue's my favorite, but also I feel like this is one of those things where they're giving Matthew like these crazy emotions and he's volatile and he's quick to anger and old fashioned and you know, it's, you know when you can just see where it's going like obviously she's going to soften him eventually and maybe eventually she will teach him about the independence women can have and all this stuff. I'm now on chapter 8, page 75. I set my alarm because I wanted to go for my run today before the kids got out of school so let's do that. I also did check both Libby and Cloud Library for my A Discovery of Witches book, but all they had on audio was this The World of All Souls thing, which is basically this conglomerate of where she got the inspiration and sort of a history of the world of the books and everything. I actually think it would be fascinating to listen to after I finish the book and I'm always a huge fan of hearing about how authors you know did it but I'm gonna have to resort to just normal music or potentially a writing podcast rather than this book non-stop. <laughs> Sandwich. Oh, you as well. That's huh? Oh, all right. While I'm still cooling down, I'm going to eat my sandwich and get back to my book because I have to at this point. Now, it was around this time that despite my best efforts, I realized that there was no way I was going to possibly finish this book within 24 hours. The sun's almost setting. Just ask me how the reading was going. <laughs> and it is really strange because part of me does really like it, at least the part I'm at right now, but it's also moving really slowly. I don't know, it's so weird because it has a lot of elements that I love. And then it's also like, I keep having to reread parts. I'm only on page 147. <laughs> you know what though? I really respect that she went for it. Like rather than this vampire just being a couple hundred years old, she's like, how about a millennia and a half? <laughs> Reborn in 537. I truly do respect the commitment. Just if he's gonna be ancient, make him ancient, you know? <laughs> okay, on page 160, we're getting all of this DNA explanation. Jess made this excellent point about how this is basically Twilight for adults, which is what I've been thinking since the beginning, because I was like, don't they do this in Twilight? At least this sort of explains why Matthew was so mad that she was like trying to hold back her magic because he's seen the DNA and like the problems that people have been having by trying to hold back. Anyways, it's like kind of an explanation, kind of. And then I guess the other part of it is just, he can't control his emotions kind of thing or something, I don't know. Uh, I like it. Do I like it? That's the question. Update, this one's doing good. He's wondering why I wasn't with him most of the day, but he's doing good. <laughs> also, I made myself some mint tea. Okay, so they're talking about having some wine that's older than she is. And since everyone's been pointing out that how similar it is to Twilight, I'd just like to say that this is way less creepy at least. Like he somehow does almost the exact same stuff Edward does, but it's somehow less creepy already. And then also the dynamics different because she's an adult. 
I'm feeling a lot of things about this book. <laughs> and I'm only on page 173. My progress has gotten slower and slower and I'm just, I'm really tired. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'll update you tomorrow morning because while I thought it was gonna be 24 hours, it's clearly not. So this maybe it's a 48 hour vlog. Maybe I can't even do that and it'll be a 72 hour vlog. Who knows? Okay, good night. Good morning. I am watching through the video I posted today, the kind of story swap challenge I did with Brooke. I feel like in a romance. I actually got to like right here over there. Anyways, and today I don't have a whole day to only read 170 pages or something. I have to like get through this book and I gotta do some work. So this vlog is continuing and I'm freaking, I'm stressing. Excuse you book. Ugh. my cappuccino. I'm also now on chapter 15. I have deleted, revised down 25 words in my essay and gotten through about four minutes of French. This is going to take me forever. <laughs> Honestly, at least now we're getting somewhere though in this book, also in my essay and my video, but mostly I was talking about the book because now that we've had like the romancy section and the like exchange of information between almost everyone that needs it. We're finally doing something. And I appreciate that Diana was the one to decide to do the action. Sometimes I read these books and I'm always so annoyed because it's like everything's happening to the characters rather than the character doing something. We're gonna see if this continues. I'm someone who loves romance, but what happens is that in a book like this, I guess I didn't realize how much the romance was gonna play into it. Does that make sense? In some ways I feel a little duped. But I will say that the world building, still pretty cool. I do like the science-y background and we're getting somewhere. After 183 pages, I feel like we're getting somewhere. Jesus. Ah, I guess it's time to continue. <laughs> hey Duke, you wanna go read outside? Yeah? Let's go. What are you waiting for? He's just waiting for me. <laughs> What's he doing so far away? Oh, I lost my spot. You ready to go inside, bud? You ready to go inside? Come on. Good job, Papa Roni. Okay, I've decided that I'm gonna work out clothes. I'm gonna go work out, but I'll be on like the bike so I can read too. Oh God. <laughs> I've moved into the car. It is buy one, get one free day at Starbucks. And my mom always likes to get a drink, so I always make sure to get her one. So I'm gonna hit the road and I brought the book just in case I can go through the drive-thru and sometimes it takes a bit. I can just read, it'll be perfect. <laughs> There's like hardly any line. I don't know what's happening. How am I supposed to read if there's no line? Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You have, you have a good choice of drinks. These are like my favorite. Are they really? So good. What else do you like? I don't like coffee or tea, so it kind of limits me. <laughs> well, at least the book can work as like a stand for the drinks. <laughs> I got my drink and I am with Emily in her live stream right now. I'm editing some, but I'm about to turn to the book. Okay, friends. So instead of reading A History of the World in Six Glasses before I go to bed, I'm still reading A Discovery of Witches. I ended up basically just doing work all this afternoon, so I'm only on page 219. <laughs> I don't know why I keep wanting to put the book on my head as if that's like, I 
thought this in university, but I wish it would just all transfer to my head. Can you hear me talk? What is wrong? I'm so tired. Anyways, it doesn't work like that. I'm very sad about it. <laughs> Why can't the story just transfer into my mind? Why? Anyways, okay. Time to read. <laughs> Well, good morning, little bubs. Yeah. How are you? You're cute as what you are. Good morning. I have been reading this book nonstop. This is this position right here. I'm now on chapter 19. <laughs> Up until this point, I would not say that the problem with this book is that we're being told things instead of shown them, mostly due to the fact that we are shown a lot, like too much, it could be argued. Um, but now we're talking about Matthew's mom supposedly not liking Diana, like, it's worse than other witches, but that hasn't really been shown. I swear, my biggest issue with this is that we have so many scenes and we maybe discover one thing per scene, whether that's the building of Diana and Matthew's relationship or anything to do with the genetics or whatever. One per scene, that's being really nice to this book. There are so many scenes in here and I just want them to combine. Combine. Four of these scenes don't need to be told. Give me, oh God. I feel like this book is beating me, honestly. And that's what makes it so sad is because it's so interesting that a part of me does want to watch this show still. Like, so it's not that bad. It's not like I'm saying it's terrible. It's just long. Do you see? It doesn't need to be this many pages. I get that other books in the past people complain when you get to the end of the book and you realize that somehow all of this happened in the two week time span, but there's a reason for that. Because if you do it like this, it's, Terrible. Okay, anyways. Yay. I'm defeated. Even if I manage to read this book, even if I manage to finish, and I will, it'll still have defeated me. It's broken my spirit. <laughs> Give it a Where are we going? When, uh, go and get some wine. Wine. When, when Callie comes home every day. Hey, Callie. Oh, when I was young, I was the same way. So we're now in Fredericksburg. Um, I'm on chapter 22, Whoop. Uh, which means I have 300 more pages of this. Um, we've already done some fun shopping y kind of things and we're about to go to a wine tasting. So I don't know how much more I'm gonna get done. This might turn into an entire week thing. Oh my God. I cannot believe most books, when I really like them, don't take me that long. So I guess that's the answer to how I feel about this book. Close. Oh. David got it. No. It's huge. Kind of an update. I've been reading this book for days now. <laughs> And it's just now gotten interesting. I've been making notes in my phone as I've read and just kind of taking pictures, but I had to come over an update because page 446, we get to this point where three pages are missing from Ashmall 782. We found one of the pages and it's like, oh wow, look at what the plot of the rest of the series. I swear we were promised this in like the first 20 pages and then it feels like in some ways we're just now getting back around to it. I know the witches kept bothering her because they're like, oh, she can see it and no one else can and stuff. But it's like now, oh God. I'm mad, I'm mad because it's actually interesting. I messaged Jess when I was on page 423 and I said, to quote myself, I'm mad that we basically have seven plot points we've covered so far and four of them took place in the last 50 pages. Okay, now I'm on page. How did I get to 394? What just happened? I said it down wrong. No! <laughs> 446 and it's like, oh wow, now we've had eight plot points. I think I'm probably gonna breeze past 
these next 100 pages, 130 pages or so, which yay. And also I need to because today is Thursday and book club meeting is Saturday. <laughs> So in one paragraph, we were able to hop through time within the story. Why didn't we do this sooner? Oh my god. Oh, good job, Bubs. All right, I am just now about to start chapter 41. Which means I'm on page 551. It's crazy we're getting close to the end. It's ever so slightly infuriating because there's a lot of cool stuff that's just now happening, but also I can tell that there's no way we're going to wrap this up in the like 30 pages we have left, less than 30 pages. So it was never a standalone novel. There are so many questions it opens up. I think there's just too many things that I'm frustrated with. Otherwise this would be so cool. Okay, anyways, let's finish the book. Then I'll tell you how I feel. <laughs> The second to last chapter. Also, here we go. Okay, page 552. We have this part where um, Hamish is giving the letters for Diana to sign and one of them's from Marcus Whitmore saying that she's ill, is gonna need medical leave, won't be able to make her conference, blah, blah, blah. I like part of this because it's obvious as things get crazier and crazier how the conference that was so important to her at the beginning of the book slips away so that it can be summed up in one passing paragraph of dialogue, not even stated by her, but it's also somewhat infuriating. I think I'm just mad, I think, yeah. I think at this point, I'm just mad about other things. So I'm gonna say I like this. I like it. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna freaking finish this book. Let's do this. Oh gosh, I had to pause again before I got to the end. But anytime I read that belongs in a museum, I think of this scene from Indiana Jones. To reclaim my property from you, that belongs in a museum. Yes, it does indeed. The final chapter. I always love when they're short like this. Only three pages. It always feels as if it's acting as a sort of epilogue. Done. Oh, sorry for disturbing you, puppy. You can go back to sleep. Y'all. So today is the day of our other tube chat where we're going to discuss this book in depth. And I'm so excited to have other people to talk about it with because upon finishing with some more reflection. There was ultimately a lot I liked about the book. The concept's really cool. I did appreciate some of the characters. I think the backstory and the world that Deborah Harkness created is, it's, it's so rich. My problem ultimately with everything came down to the actual storytelling. And it's so funny when I was editing the vlog back to see me saying that I liked the way she was writing because the writing itself, and this is where we can get into a whole discussion because obviously writing is how you tell the story. It's not just like word by word sort of thing, but the word by word, the syntax, the like feeling of stuff as I was reading, ultimately kind of nice. The problem is these middle 300 pages, I'm not expecting to live with the characters in real time as they lived it. Does that make sense? And I think if you are someone who likes that, then you will think this book is great. I felt like the pacing was all wrong. Those 300 pages in the middle dragged the book down so much. And because of the pacing issues, we were getting a lot of foreshadowing of what's to come, but it's what's to come throughout the series. Like I distinctly remember taking a picture of something because I was like, oh, this is gonna be important later and it wasn't important at all and I felt like that happened like four or five times and I can realize that it's gonna be important like they're gonna lose allies that are gonna die because of our main character's love for each other and God, again so much of what she's set up is incredible but the way it's being told it, I is awful for me <laughs> so I struggle so much because on the one hand I thought the writing was great on the other hand I thought the writing was shitty is it the writing versus the storytelling is it I don't know who again I'm gonna go back to what I said throughout the thing. Scenes should have been combined. I don't know how many times I had to like read about her eating. I don't care. Like, 
<laughs> and I think that was supposed to be like a passage of time and here's, it's like one thing was revealed and then we would eat and then another thing was revealed and then we would eat. And I'm so mad that this wasn't for me because it's so cool. Okay. There's only one thing left to do besides the chat. I'm just gonna, we're gonna go return this book. I honestly, I'm so mad. <laughs> I don't want to look at it anymore. Let's go. All right, goodbye book. Goodbye forever. And to combat the loss I felt of reading that book, I picked up more books. <laughs> Please do comment down below. Let me know if you've read anything by Deborah Harkness before. Let me know if there's any book that you've read where you loved the premise but the actual execution was off and maybe even the execution was only half off. And also let me know if you're a writer what you are attempting to do to combat that yourself. Obviously so much of this comes down to taste as I showed at the beginning of the vlog. How many ratings did Discovery of Witches had and it still maintained a four star average. So yeah, clearly it's a taste thing. Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will have this up in time that you could join the live stream over on Jessica's channel. I will link it down below and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye! Off of three, off of 300, oh. Sis, <laughs>